Welcome to the channel. Here we have an interesting charging battle ongoing. We have the SEAL versus Model Y versus Model 3 there in the back. And also the fourth car here is the Hyundai Kona. That is the white one uh, back here. And these four cars are charging from this uh, 200 kilowatts CCS charging station in cold conditions. So we have minus 13 degrees at the moment. So in this video we'll check the charging performance of each of the four cars here at the charger, including the charging power and state of charges. And let's see who will take the win here in this uh, cold winter day charging battle. So let's go! The electric seal. All right, it's minus 13 outside at the moment and it has been a cold night, I think about minus 15 last night and also yesterday was minus 10 or thereabouts. And now I haven't driven the car for 20 hours or so and the car battery is really, really cold at the moment. Um, but how cold is it? I can't now tell unfortunately because uh, as you know, BYD blocked access to the OBD2 readings and I've usually plugged in my OBD2 reader, um, which is this one, basic OBD2 reader. Uh, but now if I plug this in, I can connect to it, but it won't be able to retrieve any data. So I'm not able to uh, see the battery temperature figures anymore on the infotainment screen. And that's of course really a shame, but definitely the battery is cold because it's this cold outside. And uh, I just a uh, moment ago I enabled the um, I enabled the battery preheating, so that is now on, and I will soon start driving a bit. It won't be a highway drive, just an urban drive, but let's see if it helps with the DC charging speed uh, today. Um, battery is 38%, and when I arrive at the charger, it's probably closer to 30% or something like that. And let's see uh, what kind of uh, charging speed we get out of um, out of the seal in these cold conditions. First charging test in cold conditions this year. And let's see how that will go. And of course, what makes this test interesting is also the fact that the recent software updates, the 2.0 and 2.1, they included improvements and optimizations in the charging performance in the cold. Of course, it's a shame that we can't look at the battery temperature and how it behaves uh, now during the preheating and, and during the beginning of the charging session. We can do that now and that's uh, all due to the decisions made by the manufacturer. But at least those over-the-air updates, they raised the expectation a little bit towards this DC charging session. Despite the fact that it is relatively cold outside, minus 13 uh, degrees Celsius. Even though I'm not able to preheat the battery for a long time uh, before this charging session, I have just a brief drive and brief preheating uh, period before I, I arrive at the charger. So it is qu quite challenging from that perspective, but uh, if they've been able to improve how the BMS functions in these settings, we should still see decent charging power in the beginning of the charging session. Um, it's going to be um, 150 kilowatts or 200 kilowatts station uh, CCS. So realistically with these conditions, maybe we should expect um, at least um, 70 kilowatts. And, and I know some of you say that what 70 kilowatts, that is so slow, but you need to take into account these conditions that the battery is really, really cold after the full night of minus 15 degrees and only a brief preheating period before arriving at the charger. But let's see how it goes. It's going to be interesting and I will of course report the whole charging curve as usual here on the electric seal. So let's go! All right, I'm here at the charger and um, yeah, like estimated, 
uh, 30% stock when arriving. It's still minus 13 degrees. And um, it is 200 kilowatts CCS, this one. So let's see what kind of uh, power we'll be able to get from here. There is four chargers and one, I think, Model 3 charging at the moment. So it's not that crowded and we should be able to get uh, pretty solid uh, charging power. But now the real question is how much can the battery and the BMS let in? So the Model 3 is charging at 55 kilowatts only. It has 77% battery left. So it's not uh, paradise for other manufacturers either. The All right, and the starting power that we get in the beginning of this charging is not more than uh, 49 kilowatts. I would have hoped that this would have been a little bit uh, better, closer to that 70 kilowatts. Uh, but now we are at this um, uh, 48, 49. And now this, uh, actually this charging station starts to be full. It's getting uh, full. There's uh, one, is it that Kona or Kia and then there is uh, Model Y that is just coming to charge as well. So we were a little bit unlucky with the traffic and now the whole charging station is full and that means that the capacity of this charger will be split between four cars and everybody will get pretty uh, low charging power unfortunately. Um, so now you can see the e effect here. Uh, when the other two cars started charging and there is now four cars charging, our charging speed dropped to below 30. So that's not great. So this is indeed quite interesting situation. We have uh, four cars here, two Teslas, Model 3, Model Y. Then there is Hyundai Kona Electric and then BYD Seal. And uh, the state of charge is very so that the, the lowest is... Uh, uh, below 20% uh, uh, the Model Y and then the highest is uh, over 80% the Model 3. Uh, we are there in the middle as well as the Kona. Um, and now let's reveal the results. Who is leading and who is behind? Let's see the charging powers here. So this is pretty interesting. Uh, uh, this is Model 3 charging at 42 kilowatts at 80, 84 state of charge. This is the seal. Oh my god, it's only Um, no, that's that's not the seal. This is the seal. Uh, 47 kilo, 48 kilowatts at 34 percent, and this 29 percent is. Uh, that's the Kona. Uh, the Kona is taking uh, 29. Uh, Kona is taking only 16 kilowatts in. Model 3 42. Uh, the seal now leads the pack. Uh, 50 kilowatts, uh, the seal takes the lead here, and then there is Model Y uh, at 40 kilowatts. So here you can see that we are up to 56 kilowatts. So that's not a massive number, but it is still leading the pack here out of these four cars. Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y, Hyundai Kona and then a BYD seal and BYD seal is the fastest to charge out of all of these four. So that's actually a pretty good result even though in absolute terms this number is not that great. And now the updated situation. Uh, we are still leading uh, 58 kilowatts at 40 percent. Uh, then there is uh, the second one is still model 3 interestingly uh, 42 kilowatts at this full battery. Model Y is taking only 39 kilowatts in, the state of charge 22% and the Kona keeps to be there at 16 kilowatts at 31%. So the seal still in the lead in this charging battle between four EVs here in cold conditions, minus 13 degrees. Looking at these numbers, of course, we have to be fair. The station here is full, so the power is being split by the cars and also the state of charge is very quite a bit so the model 3 was already at uh, over 80 percent and model y is closer to 20 percent here and maybe the situation would be different if there would be more free capacity here on the charger 
or if the state of charges would be equal. So this is not the scientific test, but this is anyway a real world situation that happened today here at the charger. And I think the fascinating part is that despite the cold and despite this power sharing, BYD Seal is consistently pulling the most power of this group of cars. And even though the LFP chemistry in general has been criticized about you know the performance in the cold um, today here um, I think the blade LFP is working pretty decently it is keeping up and even beating the other cars here in this very specific real world scenario our battery is now 65 percent full and that is enough for me so um, I will continue my my trip here. That was, I think, pretty interesting charging test in cold conditions. First time this year, and um, even though it could have been, of course, much faster session, and the peak powers and the average powers were was pretty average. It was good to see that Seal did very well compared to those other cars in the in that charger. But I would have been really curious to see the battery temperatures and what is going on in the preheating at the moment uh, after the recent over-the-air updates. But like mentioned the OBD2 readings are blocked so you can't retrieve any data through the OBD2 port at the moment with BYD cars uh, after the recent uh, software updates. By the way, there is one theory about what BYD might be doing regarding OBD2. Uh, please um, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Uh, one of my next videos um, will will discuss a little bit about that and also how it relates to the upcoming uh, regulation here in the European Union and what is expected from car manufacturers uh, across the board. So definitely this kind of um, uh, data blocking cannot be long-term solution, but there might be something else that BYD is uh, preparing under the hood and this OBD blocking is related to that. So please stay tuned and check my upcoming video, the Electric Seal news that will be soon available here on the channel. But for my next charging test in cold conditions, I think I will try to find a charger which has a lot of capacity free, so we really can see the maximum that the car is able to pull. Today it was a little bit constrained by, you know, other, other cars on the charger. But uh, next time if I can just find a CCS charger which has a lot of availability, and then something like minus 15 degrees, I think that would give us a little bit more data on the charging performance than today's test. But anyway, uh, I hope you found this um, uh, small charging battle in minus 13 degrees interesting today. If you did, please use the like button, please comment below and subscribe to the electric seal. That is always appreciated and it keeps this channel alive. But thank you for watching and until next time.